everybody. Welcome to today's uh, Wildstar live stream. Uh, I am Chad Moore, game director on Wildstar. To my right is... I'm Tyler Fuchs, also known as Tyrius. I'm the raid designer for Wildstar. Uh, generally, we'd have Jonathan Brown here with us today. Unfortunately, Jonathan is sick. Yeah, bummer. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel that bad for him. He should have just sucked it up and been on the stream anyway. Yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> I would have. Uh, anyway, so today we've got some pretty exciting things going on. Um, obviously, the we've got the second phase of the Red Moon Terror Raid, which we're calling Red Moon Mutiny. That releases in about a week. Um so we're going to be talking about that today. Uh, Tyler is going to be digging into some of the mini bosses and bosses. We've got some brand spanking new concept art that we've never shown you guys. So we're sort of getting into the design of Redmi Mutiny and the process we followed in order to get to where we are today. Um, we've got, uh, as I said, the boss previews. Uh, we're actually going to get into the game and show you those. Um, and as always, we just wanted to send out a big, huge thank you to all of our PTR testers. Yep, there's uh, a bunch of you guys. I've been watching you die pretty much nonstop, and it's, it's been very valuable to me, <laughs> and lots of fun, hopefully, for me and you. Yeah, I mean, I know we've said it before, but it is invaluable what you guys do for us to get this content ready uh for live so thank you uh and for all of the work that you that you've done i think we've got a little bit more time before uh the raid releases right will we be doing any more testing before uh, uh yeah live? there's actually a new ptr build going up today i believe okay so that should have a lot of changes getting close to the final balance all that stuff because we're getting right up on it uh and then tomorrow we have our big uh patch that drops all the cross faction stuff right yep so, um, yeah, that's a good segue, by the way. Hey. Thank you, buddy. Uh, yeah, so uh, in preparation for the release of Red Moon Terror uh, tomorrow, the 9th of November, we are actually updating the game so that all of the cross-faction functionality that we have been talking about over the past couple of weeks will uh, be available. So uh, as of tomorrow, you will be able to create cross-faction dungeon groups, raid groups, uh, arena teams, uh, cross-faction housing. Yep, so that's a big one. Now Oren and Shua can be neighbors. Uh, that could be dangerous. Yep, they can kill Lavka <laughs> side by side too. <laughs> so um, that obviously for us is uh, really, really exciting. You know, um, we had uh, Dev Connect about uh, dropping the five faction barrier earlier on in the year and sort of based on all the feedback that we got from you, we sort of set out a plan, and this is really the final stages of that plan. Uh, and I think it's pretty exciting. It's going to be great to see what kinds of cross-faction groups sort of go out there. Yeah. I assume there would be lots of cross-faction raid groups and guilds uh, that we'll see forming over the next week. Um, obviously, uh, sure. we want you guys to put those things through their paces. So as soon as that stuff goes live tomorrow, jump in, start testing it out. Uh, we did have some testing on PTR, which went really well, but again, uh, we want to make sure this stuff is working right before uh, Red Moon Mutiny goes live on the 16th. So, um, let's talk about Red Moon Mutiny. All right. What do you think? Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're there. <laughs> okay. We, we made it. Uh, Red Moon Mutiny is, it should be awesome. It's pretty big. Uh, it's got 10, 11 mini boss, 10 mini bosses, and uh, three full new bosses. It opens up the rest of the raid to its completion for normal mode, which is going to be exciting. Uh, lots of people are going to be racing to see who kills Lavica first. I am looking forward to that race very much. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's what we've got to look forward to yeah. with Ruby Mutiny. There's lots of stuff that we opened up. We uh, we had some mini bosses that didn't get included in the first half, so we were able to pull them into the second half, which really showcased a lot of uh, arts, like dedication to making our game look friggin' fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm I'm personally excited to be able to show off those uh, things that we weren't able to get in the first half. Um, so, and obviously we're going to dig into that a little bit here today. I, I think though, it, to really set the stage and get 
what's important about this raid out of the way first. Uh, let's talk about the lore. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, sure. Uh, no, so uh, just to catch everybody up, uh, the Red Moon Terror raid sort of started when um, Mordecai Red Moon, who you fought uh, at Skullcano Island, and Lavica the Darkhearted, who was also there at Skullcano Island, got together. Uh, Lavica r raised Mordecai from the dead. Uh, and once that happened, they hatched an evil plan to create an army of undead zombie space pirates uh, who will be intent on taking over all of Nexus, killing all of the people who are there, and taking all that fat loot for themselves. Oh. So that is the story. Uh, Red Moon Terror Phase 1 was released uh, about, what, has it been a couple in of months August, ago now? Uh, yeah, in August. Uh, the end of that phase was the defeat of Mordecai Redmoon by many of you out there, I'm certain. So yep. uh, thank you very much for your help. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Lavica is still alive and is still uh, focused on uh, bringing their evil plan to fruition. So all of you Nexus heroes out there are going to have to actually go and take her down. Yep. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add from a lore perspective? From a lore Terrorists. perspective. Okay. I think we'll cover the little tidbits of lore as we get to the bosses and start to show them off a little bit. Uh, from a lore perspective, <laughs> I think you have it well in hand. Uh, I, man, I'm, I'm really, it's great to hear that. Okay, so we've got raids, we've got lore. Uh, I think let's get into some concepts. Sure. Uh, and then we will actually get into uh, the raid itself, where Tyler will show you some of the awesome mini bosses and bosses that you will be facing off against. So, yep. uh, I'm going to get this ready to go here. So, if you guys have ever wondered what a raid zone looks like when it starts, it looks a lot like this. There it is. This is. I believe day one, a designer and an artist get together and draw out some boxes. Uh, this is just the map for Act 3, uh, which is what, what we're calling Red Moon Mutiny. Uh, you can see that in the back half, there's some rooms that got removed. The top, the top half of that drawing is the, uh, the flat map, and then the bottom is a 3D perspective. Yeah. So you can kind of see there's some uh, vertical movement happening where you drop down tubes and you're moving down staircases and stuff to kind of keep it laid out in a way that feels like you're traveling through the interior of a giant pirate spaceship yep. as opposed to just running across, you know, a flat map. Um, so let's go, we probably let's, move on to the next one. go next. Okay. All right. So this is an early concept uh, of what we started out by calling the bar in the crew quarters. You can imagine inside a pirate ship they're going to have a bar. You know, pirates like drinking and things. They do like to drink. So about that. Uh, we started with a bar, but then we were kind of, we cranked it up a little bit. So it ended up looking a little bit more like a nightclub. So if we can go to my screen, then let's check out the nightclub as of today. So this is Kino's Cove. It's a pretty, pretty happening place. Mixmaster Kino's waiting for us up on the dance floor over there. But I want to check out some of the awesome. Would you say Mixmaster Kino is the DJ of this club? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, dude, look at that. It's pretty sweet. Is there going to be Light some floor. some dancing going on on here? There is some dancing. Okay. Got some DJ booths over here. Yeah. Speakers in the corner, and we still got the bar vibe going on. There's still plenty of places to grab drinks. Yeah. But let's uh, let's go get some fighting on and all see right. what see what Mixmaster Kino is all about. So he's going to, you know, use attacks such as uh, sick beats like that, some record spin. Wait, are those actual space pirate records? Yeah, they don't have iPods, so they have to use real <laughs> old school space vinyl. It's space vinyl, all exactly. Right. All right, that's cool. Uh, so he's spinning some records, he's dropping the sick beats, and every once in a while he will drop the bass that's going to uh, demolish the entire raid unless you handle it correctly. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I didn't, I don't think that sounds like a good thing if he's gonna drop some bass. Drop the bass. Yeah. I think that's something you wanna stop. All right. Which, it's only 100 interrupt armor, I'm sure you can handle it. 
<laughs> I'm not going to let that happen, though. I'm going to use my dev cheats to move on. All right, now, well, real quick, loose. though, I was going to say, so obviously there's going to be fat loose all over this raid. Absolutely. Uh, but I heard a rumor that there may also be some sweet Jeffy K uh, tunes in this, uh, in this encounter. Absolutely. Our, our own resident DJ, Jeffy K, delivered some uh, sick tracks as we like to call it in the biz, uh, which actually him and I work together to integrate them into, uh, so we get the beat of the music with the sick beat timing of the actual encounter. So you're hearing something that should be telling you, hey, you want to jump on every, or you want to deal with this mechanic on every beat. You want to dance, you want to do this. And uh, it's really cool. We've got, wow. we actually able to tie music and gameplay together, which, uh. Which, when happy. you have Jeff K as your composer, makes it super especially awesome. It makes it hard to keep up. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> actually really awesome. Do you have the music on in the game right now? Uh, you turn it I don't know. I'm, I can't hear my own music, yeah. so. No, I mean, turn it up. Oh. Check it out. Let's turn our music up then. Master volume, music all the way up. Let's turn these other ones down so we can hear. I think the music has probably ended since we defeated the encounter. But I encourage you guys to go in there and check it out. We'll see if we can make it more available. Um, so we've got a lot of mini bosses to get through. So let's let's bring up the next concept piece All right. that we're uh, we're about to head off to yep. meet. All right. So what do we got here? Oh, here we go. Yeah. All right. This is an early grayscale of uh, <clears throat> hydroponics. Okay. Uh, and there's some fancy machinery up in the top left, which I'm not sure where that ended up. But the the bottom half of this is hydroponics, uh, which is where you know on a spaceship full of pirates, they've got to eat something, and these pirates are kind of environmentally friendly and like to grow their own food instead of just pillaging all of it. Wow, I wouldn't have uh, pegged the Red Moon Marauders for being so environmentally conscious. Well, they, you know? yeah, they like to eat, so sometimes uh, they have to. Now, given where we are with the election and everything, I'm not sure how many California viewers we have out there, but do they grow anything else here in hydroponics? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's just, just food. Well. And man-eating plants. <laughs> okay, but there's there's none of those none of that other stuff. None that of you're that other about. illegal stuff. No. that they would never do. Just uh, creatures, uh, plant creatures that will slaughter you. Yes, that okay. will kill you. All I right. mean, things that will kill you. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna give Cropper Godeek a little bit of party. Let's see, there we go. He's fighting. Um, so as you can look around, you see some man-eating plants. Yeah, they're they're probably not too friendly. So stay away from the plants with teeth. I think that's the yep. first uh, first piece of advice that I can give. Just sort of being a you know an outside observer. Yeah, you know, generally a bad thing. Um, those mushrooms don't look very friendly, so you might want to stay away or kill those. Yep, kill those. There's a root root, rotten root root, and then. It's kind of hard to see because they're so small, but there's these clingy carrots that are really making my life miserable right now, oh. keeping me from moving around too much. I hate clingy carrots. I mean, if there's one thing I hate, oh, there they come. Yep. Cling oh. Clingy carrots. Okay. Oh, oh, untethered carrot. Oh, carrots got me. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, pirate botanists. You never would have thought they'd be such a pain in the butt. But, but it's a thing. Uh, Let's just take a quick moment to look around here. What an awesome room, by the way. Yep. Okay. Art, um, again, outdid themselves. I love the hanging ones. They really give that uh, Half-Life 2 tongue hanging ceiling. Oh my god, I hated vibe. those things so yeah. much. Makes me want to shotgun them in the <laughs> face. <laughs> right. Uh, but, oh my, I mean, yeah, just like, just the overall art in here. Unbelievable. Lighting unbelievable. Uh, so... For all of you uh, artists out there watching, you guys did a sick job with uh, this this raid. For sure. Okay. All right. We're moving on to uh, Fry Cook Yegar. Yegar? Yegar? I don't know. We'll have to go to the lore experts. Uh, uh, here's a couple. Of, here we go. We've got... Uh, these are just... These are things from the last room that we were in, right? Well, I guess there's a little DJ booth there. Yeah. This is just a misc section, uh, yeah. selection of props. Okay. Uh, we've got the, the flowers down on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, we've got a safe, which we might see in an upcoming room. Oh, and okay. And that... What's that up on the left? That's a shellark that tank? Some kind of a tank? Mm. A shellark tank? We'll, we'll probably get to check that out in a bit. <laughs> All right. I, li uh, I like shellarks. So, okay. I don't think we have anything from the kitchen. Right. So, before we... Fight Fry Cook Yeager. We're gonna give the kitchen the kitchen a gander. 
the galley a gander. Right, did I, is there any concept here? No. This is, that's not it. Okay, yeah, we'll save that for next. All right. All right. Uh, so this is the kitchen. So this is the walk to end all walks. Oh, okay. I'm assuming you don't want to end up in there. You don't want to end up in there, okay. and the stuff that comes out of there is uh, hot, I guess you could say. It doesn't look too appetizing, actually. Nope. And then we've got some custom Marauder garbage disposals in the corner. Oh. Fancy. Do those do those things can chop up just about anything, I'm yep. assuming? Okay. Yeah, you All could. Right. You might might need to figure out what they're for. Okay, I hear that. Um, and, and who's this boss here? He's Fry Cook Yagar. He is. Boss. He would be the uh, the chef, and he's got a little top hat. Look, <laughs> he he does not look uh, extremely friendly. I have to admit. No, his sword's way bigger than me. Yeah, like twice the size of me at least. It looks like he's rotting too, given yeah. that he's a space zombie space pirate. I guess that's a problem. So that's the thing: is all these zombies in the crew quarters? They were zombies. Or they were pirates, and they right. were participating in the day-to-day -day life of a pirate. Right. And then they got turned into zombies, and they didn't really know what to do, so they just kind of went just back to kept it. doing their thing. But All right, I feel not, that. Zombies don't need too much food, so I guess he's, he's probably pretty bored. Let's go ahead and give him a, a shot to kill me. Hint, it's not going to happen since uh, I'm cheating. What is that? That looks like a grease fire coming our way. Oh, my gosh. Uh... Probably something to avoid, I'm assuming. Probably. Okay. Yeah. You know, do you know what you don't do to a grease fire? Here's a little PSA. Uh, I do know that. You do not put water on it. Yep. Uh, and you also don't put... Uh, wait, what are you playing here? Uh, a warrior. Well, what's your race? Oh, I'm a Cassian. Yeah, don't put Cassians on it either. Hey, are you booting something out of the yeah, way? Yeah, so there's a these little hot sauce globs that popped out of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> popped out of the walk and uh-oh he just ate them oh that's i'm and assuming now, you do not want him to get the hot sauce he is super sauce okay and that hurts real bad Ooh, oh some look. dragon's breath going on <laughs> this this room is just uh i was gonna say uh so far of the three rooms we've seen and the mechanics associated with them this one's numero uno yeah that you might love this there's a, a flaming cubic in there Oh, I do like cubes. Little charcuterie. And you might get a little cube bacon. Oh, yeah. Uh, out of that, maybe? Maybe, if you try real hard. I love the boot, too. Look at that. It's just like, boink. All right. I feel like get you'd, it away. Get, you'd get the bacon if there was a chua in there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Everybody loves bacon. Watch out. Oh, oh. just in time. Whew, that, that was, was close. close. I feel like that really taxed my abilities. Okay. Uh... Do we, is this something you want to show now over here? Uh, yeah, let's go to that one next. All right, we've got some sick concept art up here, Margaret. Check it out. What is, what are we looking at here? Other than it looks like a treasure room, if you ask me. That is exactly, exactly what, what it is. Yeah. Treasure okay. storage. Yeah. This is where they take all the booty that they pillage and pile it up so that they can, I don't know, Scrooge McDuck in it or yeah. whatever, roll around. <laughs> Whatever pirates do with all, all whatever, that. Whatever they do with, some, with that booty. Yeah. All right. They so, Scrooge McDuckett. All right. Sweet. Absolutely. All right. So um, you've got treasure. There's a room, and, and you're going to fight in that room, I'm assuming. Is yep. that true? So let's go. We can actually go to the next concept piece, okay. which is also oh. of our uh, Ooh, conference okay, conference cool. treasure room. So obviously you need to guard the treasure with something. Yeah. So they chose to guard it with giant terrifying statues of their... Of uh, their... Octopus space god. Space ocean god. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, with, you Is know, the power of that one of our producers of in the middle? That's, uh, <laughs> so... That uh, is a representation of Peter Sung, for those That's of you that know Peter. <laughs> Uh, he did make it into a number of our concepts over the years. Yes. <laughs> we're, our concept, we're told that he is in, incredibly fun to draw. Right. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So these things guarding the treasure, obviously, uh, if you try to steal the treasure, they are not going to do good things to you. Probably not. Okay. They're, uh, they're, they're going to use the power of lightning. All right. Well, let's, let's get back to this sweet room here then. All right, so this is what it transformed into. Uh, we had to do a little bit away with the, uh, the like, nice little study full of treasure yep. that we had going on to make space for gameplay. 
but here's what we got. You know what? I kind of like this, though. There's a little more room to enjoy the spoils that the Red Moon have uh, obviously been collecting over the past few decades. And there's so. a lot of them. I mean, they've even pulled some stuff from Skullcano. It looks like they've oh, turned man. some of their own into gold. Yeah, okay. There's probably some gold lop in here, I would assume, somewhere. Uh-huh. Let's okay. see if we can't sneak, sneak around here without getting in too much trouble. Yep. Yeah. He looks like he was uh, oh, yeah. changed to gold at just the right time before he was maybe flattened. Or there, And there's a lop right there next to him. See yep. down there? All right. All right. Yeah. So we can take some more time to enjoy the treasure. Oh, oh lightning. that's what happens. Ow. Okay. Uh, so we're going to fight... Uh, Loot Watcher Korg. Okay. And we're going to see what it takes to... Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Loot Watcher Korg, his job is to watch the loot. That's that's very insightful. Okay. I, that probably Good. took years of yeah. war training to, <laughs> I'll tell to you be what, able to like, discern that. Sometimes uh, you just got to go out on a limb, okay? But I'm glad we figured that out. So this guy's job, uh, along with the lightning zapping giant statues, is to make sure you don't get the loot. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So it's our job to make sure he fails. Oops. Let's go ahead and actually fight him. Here we go. So... He right, just got, he's going to use that sword. Oof, that hurt. <laughs> Whoa. All right, what's this guy's deal? So obviously he's going to—he's spinning to win here a little bit, right? So right now he's indomitable. Okay. He, he just does not want to lose. He doesn't want to fail at his job of watching the loot. So we're going to keep it, keep it going here until... Oh, man, he just isn't losing health anymore. I have an idea. Okay. Maybe we can shock him out of his invincibility. Wow. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. He's overcharging the coil, which makes the coil unhappy, but clears up a little bit of more space to fight. So somehow you oh, need... there's some lightning. <laughs> somehow you need to draw him into the lightning without getting fried yourself. It yep, like. that, okay. would be, that would be a good idea to go after this. Let's see, now he's only resolute. So he's, <laughs> lose, he's losing some of his determination okay. to stop us from uh, destro taking his loot. All right, speed this up a little bit and see if we can not get him. Oh, he went for, to indefatigable. These words are good. These are some SAT words right here. That's definitely, there's, uh, I feel like there's some Carbine Gary in uh, some of those names. It might be some Gary. Yeah. We'll see. What are we now? We are steady, slowly losing. I love these word games. <laughs> a nerd. Oof. I think the important thing is though, this is a fun encounter. Okay. Yep, there's a lot of movement involved yeah. in this encounter. There's a lot of spinning swords. Loot Watcher Korg is uh, definitely not the friendliest of treasure guards to be stumbling upon. I know you got a little pet out there, a little pet monkey. Is that your pet monkey? That is my pet monkey. Okay. It's uh, the M Monkey King's little friend. Yeah. I forget what his name is. Okay. Let's see. He's now uncertain. Oh, we almost got him. All right. I'm going to skip the last couple so we can move along to okay. actual... Actual... Uh, uh, we still got two more mini bosses to go over. But check out this giant pile of treasure. This is all yours. So once you take him down, you get to throw this in your... I think there's like a new... 12 or uh, sorry 19 slot bag that will fit all of this are we <laughs> doing a 19 slot bag that's uh that's news to me uh that is not actually confirmed okay. but i th <laughs> i think it would take 19 slots to fit all this at, stuff. at least at maybe least, a couple yeah. of those now the real question is can you put this in your house see that would be awesome so i think there, yeah. almost i think most of the pieces of this already exist as decor and the few that don't we should definitely look into yeah. these these gold signs that and gold that i would definitely collect that gold dragon sign the uh, crashed gold rowboat with some awesome exhaust yeah i like that too uh so yeah most of this stuff i think already exists but if it doesn't i think we should maybe give somebody a nudge nudge and get wink it up there. wink get it done okay yeah. i know a lot of the uh, a lot of the props in here exist as decor objects for uh 
the raid. So okay, do we need to show us some more? Uh, oh, so we're done with that. I think, yeah, I think we've gone through all the concept for this section. Okay. Uh, we can just move on to these, these bosses. This one contains my favorite oh. name joke in the entire uh, instance, which wasn't me, by the way. It wasn't? No. Okay. So this, we're in uh, the interrogation room with, you know, the big old shark, shell arc the tank. The shell arc tank, okay. Uh, let's go check out. Do they have lasers? Uh, he didn't fare too well. Oh, he didn't do too well. They don't have any frickin' lasers. No frickin' lasers? There are okay. frickin' lasers in this uh, this encounter, though. Okay. So, we'll see. So we have uh, Rackmaster Antru and his pet, Intero, who appears to have 1.06 billion health. That's a lot of health. Yeah, we uh, should probably not kill him first. Okay. 42, 40 million is probably more approachable. A little easier to handle. Now, yep. uh, what happens if you take a dip into the shellark tank? Oh, what you think? What do you think happens? <laughs> you get shellarked. You get shellarked. All right. All right. We are. All right. So he's got some aqua spout going on. Oh, Intero, the gator. Oh it. come on! It's the best. It that's makes me uh, so happy. <laughs> Uh, got to admit, that's pretty bad. He's but. chasing. All right, so yeah, you've got the... Uh-oh, here's the frickin' laser. You've got, you've got the interrogator, okay, who... I oh, just, oh, you're in the tank. Oh. Oh, that's bad. And if I weren't cheating, I'd be very dead. Now, what ha if you're in there, can you actually defeat those shellarks, or is no, it pretty as, much instant death? As soon as you're in there, that's a that's a whole Ooh, whole other thing. Goodness. You are you are dead deader than a doornail. So was that because he was lasering you? Yeah, he was channeling a laser beam on me that was going to teleport me into his shark oh, tank. Oh man! I that, wish I had friends to stop that for me. That looks like, that looks like a rough encounter, man. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna move on. Okay. This room's. I, I really like the lighting in this room. It's nice and cool and dark and a good contrast to those other, the hot, hot kitchen and yep. the shiny. Oh, it's so bright and shiny. <laughs> so we, we have a question from chat. Yep. Um, it's a pun setup, apparently, from Rhoda, and he's wondering, do most rowboats have exhaust pipes? Um, I don't. Oh, my gosh. I think you got him, Rhoda. You'll have to let us know. Pun setup. Oh, no. Katie, save me. I know she's in chat. <laughs> she's the queen of all puns. <laughs> Especially the bad ones. All KDM, right, we'll you may have to handle this one. We'll see if, if she can save us. Right. So this one, we don't have any concept to show for this because this is uh, truly terrifying. Ooh. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> this is when, when art and design go horribly awry. Uh, this is the showers. So I want to know what's that thing in the middle of the room there, Tyler? Well, what what's what's this? What does that oh, look like? Oh man! I don't want to talk about too much about the inspiration behind this because I, I was not entirely involved. I but think uh, that is uh, repulsive. Is the only way to say it. Yes. Now, what are these little creatures called? Do these I want to know? These are living sludge. So okay. one fun challenge in uh, designing this encounter and working with the, <laughs> working with it was to come up with as many words as possible to say the same thing that we really all don't want to say. Right. So these are living sludge. I believe we have odiferous remnants. Uh, <laughs> this is bilge breath. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Let's give him, give him a pull. So there's there's stink clouds moving around. Those are probably worth avoiding. He seems to be <laughs> dropping pools of, you know, he's dropping splashing bombs. Splashing muck. <laughs> <laughs> dropping. Uh, this is this is wonderful. He's dropping some kids off at the pool. <laughs> you okay. can say that. Wow. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is pretty low. It's I mean, it's yeah. very low. It's, <laughs> However, it's, it's exceptionally yeah, immersive. <laughs> so <laughs> his his shtick is but that you do have to you do have to like that they are using some toilet paper. Yep. I oh, mean, at like the very least, classy. they're trying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They're making their best effort. All right. So is Bill's breath the mini boss then? Yes, Bill's okay. breath is the mini boss of the Swab and Showers. Okay. He's a uh, his shtick is that he doesn't he has foul rage, 
the further he gets from his his home, the the giant, I don't know, monolithic the statue of sludge in the middle that he worships as a god, I guess. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is a good question. Okay. Whipple, Whipple wants to know who took the time to basically construct that oh, wonderful wow. yeah, well, masterpiece. There's, a, there's a tube at the ceiling. So I think it, it sh gets routed here from other places in the ship, maybe? Whoa, it's flinging me up in It right, may right. also... No one's sculpting it? It may have also gained sentience uh, <laughs> over the last hundred years. <laughs> Uh, it does look like it has those, a bit of a face. Are those eyes? <laughs> I, I think those are giant space corn kernels. <laughs> space corn. Uh, um, so throughout the someone encounter, someone had too many space tacos. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so uh, his uh, throughout the encounter, he summons odiferous remnants that kind of just want to path to him and become part of the bilge breath. Okay. Which restores his health. So one of the things you'll be doing throughout this encounter is moving him constantly, ducking in and out, trying to kill off the, the remnants that are too close. Yeah. Uh, without letting them get to him, lest they become part of the, the greater bilge breath and prevent you from killing him. Okay. With that, we're gonna move on. Oh. Uh, au revoir, bilge breath. <laughs> All right. uh, I will have to say that, uh, yeah, we hit a new level of uniqueness. Uh, uh, with uniqueness. <laughs> uniqueness is definitely with, a word. With that encounter. Sometimes you you get stuck in the, the muck yeah. and you just have to <laughs> keep going. You have to design your way out of that paper bag and it's... Uh, All right, so uh, so we get, is this the final uh, mini boss? These are the these are the last mini bosses until we get to get to something a little bit bigger. Okay. So this is uh, torpedo technician technician Dudley and munition specialist Lucky. Uh, they are the torpedo t uh, the munitions experts basically that handle the torpedoes for Red Moon Terror. You can see there's uh, some torpedo bays tubes on the back wall behind each of them. Uh, and they have each have a uh, back-mounted arsenal. Let's see if we can't get a little closer and check out their, his backpack. Oh, he is engaged. Basically, he shoots rockets off. Yeah. And we managed to find some uh, sweet rocket trajectory uh, tech that was uh, unused for a while. So we get this awesome bouquet of rockets up into the air. So uh, I like a, a nice. Uh, well-placed bouquet of rockets. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so do these uh, these torpedo experts. <laughs> so, right now, he's uh, created a caustic warhead. Okay. And a incendiary warhead, which seem to be ticking down. They've got a lit fuse, which they lose health over time, and when they hit zero, they go kaboom. Uh, each of these things is going to do some pretty bad stuff to me when it goes off. So wait, so are you trying to kill it? My goal is to make it so they don't go off at the same time. Ah, Lest okay. I suffer some pretty awful consequences stacked on top of each other. Meanwhile, the bosses, or the mini boss is just doing his thing. So, you may have missed it there, but I took millions of billions of damage. Okay, not literally, but a lot of, a lot of damage uh, letting those go off at the same time. And he's back with another set of warheads. So the goal is basically to uh, stagger out your warheads, yeah. explosions while you kill the boss, make sure that uh, everything happens in a sustainable manner. And these guys are optional as well. Uh, these two basically have the same the same kit, except the uh, these warheads are still going to go off. Let's clean those up. Uh, except they bring out different warheads. And part of the design of this is that these are planned to be uh, part of the hard mode encounter for Mordecai, where if you leave them up, he, they come and throw their warheads in during the fight, so you'll have to deal with these mechanics in addition to all the rest of the Mordecai mechanics. Did you all hear about that? Tyler is giving away secrets about hard mode RMT. Oh no. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, all right. We didn't tell them what those warheads did, so they'll have to. They'll have to figure that out on their own. Okay. Yep. Uh, one of the cool things about that is that we can sort of get a gradient of encounter difficulty by letting you leave, you know, uh, Dudley up or Lucky up, or then we're going for the, the full thing with both of them. No, oh, there's my way out. 
All right, so here's the empty airlock where we've already defeated Mordecai. I remember this place. Yep. This door is now open, which is, you know, different from what you guys see on live right now. We're heading out onto the deck. And... Wait, are we outside now? We are. Do we want to show a little bit of outside concept art? I think we should, because okay. we have some amazingly beautiful yeah. concept art. All right, let's do that real quick. Give me one second here. No worries. All right. So this one is a... Uh, kind of high level, it almost looks like a pain out of a comic book to me, where yeah. you would see this is the Red Moon Terror cruising by. Uh, I love the scale here, right? Do you see like this little small pixel? <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, pixel. <laughs> that is some individual who happens to be on the outside of the, uh, of the ship. That so. would be, you know, a player. Right. You're exactly. that big. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, so, so here's they, another one to show scale, and this is more of the, this is what the deck of the ship looked like before it got fancified. It's kind yep. of a, a paint over of concept. And then we added some guns. Yeah, there's always some guns on a pirate ship. Oh, added some bones, because, yeah. you know, zombies and bones yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this is more of the, uh, kind of the launch area, when you come out onto the deck, turn around, and it's looking, it, this is where you leave the airlock, where they stash all the things before you're out on the deck. Yep. Uh, maybe they have their, their space skiffs and blimps and stuff taken off from here. Okay. Um, do we have one more? Yeah, uh, here's another perspective one more. Of that. This like one really shows off some of the cool lighting that, yeah. that we got in to get some, some of the different colors mixed in. Um, all right. All right, we're, I think We're that's all the way it. around. Okay. So, this is what it looks like now. And, oh, this is perfect. Menacingly, you can see the silhouette of their, the, uh, I'm going to. Ooh. I, I, what's that called on the front of a ship? I don't know. Oh, um... <laughs> I, bet, I bet someone in chat knows. Yeah, let's go, chat. What is the, uh... What's the statue on the front of a ship called? Anybody? All right. Anybody. All well, right. We'll, we'll give you a minute or two yeah. to clear it. So right now, my objective is to get uh, to the... Get past the board anti-boarding turrets, which we're fortunately equipped to just cheat on past. We're going to destroy some of these. You have to kill the guards in order to weaken the turrets so that you can destroy them. Uh, here. And let's give the turn on some of the turrets so we can see see what they look like firing. Did we get them on? There they go. So they fire rocket barrages down this nice little now tight that display space. Is I mean, I don't know if I'm seeing this wrong, there seems to be it going a little bit slow for rockets. Is that just because we're in zero G? And yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It must be perspective too. We're up, we're up <laughs> pretty high. <laughs> right. No, they're they're moving at uh, anti personnel speeds, so we want them to to cruise over and push people off the deck. All right, I hear you. Let's destroy the last of these. Yes. Yeah. Getting some loot there. All right, turrets are dead, which puts our good friend Space Eater. The voracious star eater, star eater. Yeah. Sorry, star eater. Um, Which I do have. Uh, actually, wait one second. Not quite yet. Nope. Uh, and <laughs> all right. Close up shot yeah, of there we go. Him in action. Um, and which you can see the uh, that thing on the the bow of the ship, the prow, the yep. prow or the figurehead. There yep. we go. Um, thank you. Micah, your assistance <laughs> is invaluable. I was going to say it, but then I you asked it to the chat, so I let him. Oh, so, um, him oh, so Margaret, you want to basically Shh. get out there that you knew what that Shh. was called? I was starting to talk, but then I was like, oh, you asked okay. the chat, so I kind of... Yeah. Me Sorry. too. Actually, I was going to say it too, but I wanted to ask the chat. That, that right. makes sense. I figured the lore guy would know what that was called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so let's, we'll, uh, we'll do this We'll come later. back to these okay, after, yeah. yeah. Right. There's some awesome concept for yeah. uh, Bridge, which we'll get back to in a minute. Don't worry, you'll get another peek at that. So, uh, Star Eater the Voracious, formerly known as Space Octog, because he is, she, she is, I believe it's a she, uh, is an Octog, which is the same race as the Boson Octog. Don't you Kino. mean a Zorn? Is that a Zorn? Well, that's what the, that's what Octog's species is. I thought that was Mordecai's species. Oh, that's right. <gasps> did I just call you on a lore thing? Oh my god! I'm gonna write it in my diary. Ah, uh, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So way to go, Tyler. Yes. I'm gonna leave the stream now. Oh okay? no! Bye. I, I get to do this right by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self: Don't correct me. Right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Star Eater Voracious, yes. formerly known as Space Octog. Yeah. 
the lore behind this one is she is real hungry. Yeah. So hungry that she eats stars. That's a lot of mass that's to a, consume. Man, that's and, super hungry. And she keeps her figure so slim. Where does she put it all? Anyways, uh, so coming into this encounter, I picked up a jetpack from the jetpack dispenser, which allows me to launch myself up in the air. Uh, it's conveniently placed, actually. I mean. Well, I mean, they want the Marauders wanted them on the deck so that you know people could use jetpacks to right. get around safely. I hear you. And we're just going to use that against them. So I have two abilities that are added to my extra action bar. One is jetpack, and one is ground slam. Hint, you're probably going to have to use both of these for this encounter. Interesting. So, the number one thing that's going to make you look like a, a fool coming to this encounter is not having a jetpack. And so I, I've done that a few times. Make sure to get one. Make sure to get a jetpack. Okay. All right. So here we are. Let's, uh, all right, we're ready. So, first things start off a little slow. It's just going to, you know, hit me for a lot of damage. Slowly break my armor. You know, boss things. Uh-oh, hook shot. That seems familiar, but oof, that does oh, a lot of damage. that looks like it's rough. Yeah. That's uh, painful in the extreme. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of damage to the boss. Maybe trigger some other abilities so that we can see what's going on here. There's a question in chat asking what's on the back of the character? What's on the back of her? What's on the back of her? Uh, big spikes and things that wouldn't feel good if you were impaled on them. Yep. There's also some... Oh, all right. So we got some squirgs happening Ooh. here. Ooh. Space squirg. Uh-oh. Oh, oh man. That looked like it didn't feel... Oh, dude. You got to get out of there. Those squirg are nasty. Boom. Oh, I got one. One. I can do better than that. There's four. Oh, nice. So when you pop squirg, they make pools. And the pools slowly grow and fill up your play space. Oh. So you're going to want to plan on where you put your squirt. I would assume you want to put them close to each other? Close to each other is a great idea. Because that way you're not spreading them out or across the, the uh That, the that sounds like space. a raider's mentality. Hey, man. Look. I, I'm proud of you, Pappy. After my fail with the Zorn, I needed to come through big on... Uh, on raid strategy. I would say I would say you've delivered. <laughs> All right. So she's got some other flashy things to uh Wait, was there a giant squirg there? So they... as they live for a little bit longer, they get bigger and bigger oh. and bigger. Oh, that's a flame. Does that mean there's a bigger pool when they die? Uh what it means is that they're about to pop. When they get too big, they can't contain themselves oh. and they just explode and does uh pretty lethal damage. And you're not controlling where they die at that Exactly, point, right? which okay. is real bad. Yeah. So, uh, let's go ahead and push some health thresholds and see what, see what's, uh-oh, that looks bad. So she is summoning chaos orbs, Ooh. which has a million and a half health and I probably want to kill that before it- Kills you? Kills me, okay. you know, like everything else in this encounter, in this dungeon, <laughs> or raid rather. So we're popping Squirg. Let's see. We have something a little bit more flashy to do. You can pull me with a hookshot across the arena. All right, Star Eater, here's your time to shine. Whoa. That looks pretty good. That's a lot of stars. So, we've got some stars up here. We've got blue stars, and yellow star, or orange stars. And our goal Man. is to smash down on the boss. Oop. I think I missed that one. Uh-oh, only two. Uh, so your whole raid's gonna be in tandem, jumping up from star to star, grabbing the orange ones and smashing down into the boss to break that shield so she can't cast Supernova and kill everyone. Uh, aesthetically, this is one of my favorite things that happens in this whole raid. You just see 20 people flying through the air with jetpacks, <laughs> grabbing power-up stars and smashing into, smashing into the boss. Yeah. Plus, I feel like throwing some squirg in there and you've got yourself an epic encounter. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of managing multiple things at the same time and making sure that you're uh, you're able to handle it all. So, with that said, we're gonna move on. Ta-da! All right, look at that. There's some loot. Some fat loot. Okay. We're gonna fly up here. So one thing about the loot from this, uh, I just want to check this out. Look how awesome this looks. They built this whole big giant thing. 
just to sit in the distance. Pretty sweet. With the lantern, too. Yeah. Looks like a figurehead to me. Uh, yeah, a figurehead, for sure. <laughs> so, we're going to be okay. heading down into the bridge. Oh. So, I'm going to go plummeting, and then we'll go hit some more concept art. All right, I've got it queued up, ready to go. Fantastic. So, this is the bridge. This is some of the early concept art. We tried to figure out what we wanted the, uh, the bridge. Oh, oh, sorry. There we go. I the don't. bridge of the Red Moon Terror to look like. That is not, okay. Having some technical issues? I, am, I thought I could zoom in. I can't. That, okay. All right, no worries. <laughs> um, so, in the middle we have sort of this in, internal crow's nest in the bridge. Yep. I'm not sure what the, what the point of that is, but I don't question the marauders and their pirate yeah, business. Just, yeah, they, they do things their own way. Exactly, right. and it looks pretty cool. Yep. And then, uh, the top right you see, this is sort of the overall view of the, the, the bridge. You got some bright red colors, some a giant window out into space yep. to see what uh, see what there is to see and maybe, I don't know, navigate the ship. Yep. You've got some consoles to let, the, let all the crew members drive. So, uh, let's, go, let's go to the next one. Okay. There we go. And this, is, this was it, what it looks like basically in its final uh, finished form after lighting and everything. Uh, Art, again, did a fantastic job mixing up color palette between the, the drab kind of bronze pirate stuff and the yes. bright consoles. Uh, and then mixed in with nice, nice bits of gold that Mordecai and Lavica would definitely require for the bridge of the <laughs> Of course. Yeah. So I'm a big fan. Big fan of the way this room turned out, too. Uh, one awesome. thing that you can't see in that previous picture is uh, the new skybox that they made just for, the, just for this section of the ship. Because if you're looking out into space, you want space to look extra cool. Even yes. though I think that looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead back to back to my screen. Okay. What we can see. We've got a big giant. Dude, is that like a big giant sun there? It looks like sun. Maybe it's even a red moon. Ooh. Oh. Maybe not. Hey uh, so up here we've got the illustrious captain's chair. Okay. Which may look weird and out of proportion, but I mean, if you're Mordecai Redmoon, that probably actually works pretty well you. For mean you mean if you're a Zorn? If you're a Zorn, <laughs> yes. I got it this time. I knew I it. Nailed it. I knew it. All right, so uh, <laughs> we've got, got some ship's officers in here that we're going to have to skip on through real quick. Uh, and originally these were planned to be a mini boss. But these sort of ended up being souped up uh, base population. Yeah. So, I was. What, what was that decision? Why were Why didn't you guys make it a mini boss instead? Uh, so one of the things is we wanted to do four of them, like that was what we started as, and the decision to change it back was based on uh, kind of the play space wasn't didn't suit a council mini boss super well. We didn't want to split it up into four separate mini boss encounters. So what we ended up doing is just breaking in breaking into separate uh, base population packs to clear. But then I had to go in and I was like, oh, I'm going to take the loot off this so it doesn't give you anything and we want to set it up. So screw that. I'm just going to give you the loot anyways. Nice. So this, these space pop still give a mini boss reward, um, which I think is a suitable reward for having destroyed the Star Eater, the Voracious, and get a little, I wouldn't call it a freebie because you still got to clear them, but I'm not a fan of taking loot away from players. Yep. So we're moving, we're chasing Lavaka here. Oh. Okay. Bust. All right. All better. <laughs> so we're chasing Lavica. We're chasing Lavica down through some of the maintenance shafts. Yeah. Oh, she's jumped in. Oh, goodness. Let's, let's follow. Almost like she's taunting you to follow her. She is. Okay. Ooh, it's dark and spooky in here. Good thing there's green arrows to show me which way to go. Uh-oh, did I go the wrong way? I think you did. Nope, here oh, we go. Yeah. And down. Uh, uh, okay, cool. All right. So you are looking at the encounter formerly known as Star Map, now Navigation Core. We're on our way. Lavica's doing something there. Uh oh. She just did something. She did something. That can't be good. So this one, I don't even know if we need to go to the concept for this. We can just show it in real time. Okay. Uh, the this was one of the things where. Our design team made our art's life miserable for weeks on this one. <laughs> and they came through and still over-delivered more than we could expect. As they always do. So we come in and we go, okay, Art, we want a platform that's floating in the middle of space inside the spaceship. 
and they're like, hi. What? Okay. <laughs> so here, here is what we get. Uh, we're gonna just check it out without entering combat for a moment. So we've got our console here, we've got this big dome with the Marauder symbol at the top. Looks like you got Planet Nexus there in the middle. Yup. All right. Okay. But we turn on the console and oop, it's Ooh. turned into Alpha Cassis, Aldenari, Cassis, and Opus Nix. So this is a star map of the Cassis system. It's uh, not necessarily to scale, and all the physics don't work exactly the way real space <laughs> physics work, because that would have taken, you know, us outsourcing to NASA. But uh, we tried to get a lot of the space theme into this encounter. So the you'll notice the outer walls are gone. You're now on a platform floating over oblivion. Yeah. And the goal of this encounter is to defeat Alpha Cassis and kind of follow it through its... Uh, transformation from a sun into maybe whatever comes after a sun. The lore uh, infused in this encounter is impressive. We tried son. really hard. Okay. I like it. I mean, you you are seeing the home world of the Cassians, the only place in the game you can see it, here in the Red Moon Terror. Yep. That's pretty awesome. It looks like that yeah. over there. All right. All right, so let's, uh, let's give it a little bit of a go. So there's a few things that happen in this encounter. We got solar flares, we've got solar winds. Uh, let's go ahead and point the solar flare at Volpa's Nix. Uh oh, we ignited its atmosphere. That seems less than ideal. <laughs> uh, we've got some asteroids coming in. Oh, let's go ahead and move That star those. does not seem happy with you right now. No, the star is very unhappy with me. That's why I'm going to go pick up some uh, cosmic debris. And let's see if we can't get this to happen in a timely manner. Where's my other asteroids? I need more asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh, I should have set up my bar differently for this one. Oh, well. So we're, make, we're now at critical mass from collecting all these. Uh, picking up a cosmic debris gives me accumulating mass, and now we're at critical mass, which is going to... Ooh, a world ender, it says, is heading toward Aldenari. Open a wormhole. What does that mean? So we've got half of a wormhole here. Uh, the world ender, uh-oh. That seems... Ooh, that doesn't look good. Oh, it just barely missed Fulpa's Nyx. Let's see if it gets to Aldenari. That's going to be very unfortunate if it does. <laughs> what do you think a world ender does? It looks like it ends the world. <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. So we just lost... Aldenari, the planet. Uh, the planets in this encounter provide some pretty sweet buffs. Uh, oh. I think Aldenari gives you movement speed, I believe. Uh, whereas Cassis does something that we've never done before, which is part of... Oof. We just lost Cassis to uh, <laughs> some, some uh, proton storms. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Cassis actually does something we've never done before. It allows players to res during combat. So if you die and Cassis has re reinforcements charges remaining, it will pick you back up, which is, whoop, I just made a wormhole. Another wormhole. Whoop. So you can use that to travel around the map. You could, there's a little bit of a cooldown on jumping through it so okay. that you don't, you don't do anything insane. But, uh, and the cool <coughs> thing is it actually works on other objects. It works on world enders, it works on uh, uh, asteroids, and so I you can it works on the planets. So does that mean you can, if if a world ender is on its way to destroying one of your planets, you can put a wormhole in front of it and warp that wormhole or warp that world ender way across Whoa. the map? Oh! In fact, that this, might be something that you are uh, expected to do. This star is not looking happy right now. No, it's not. So in order to not spoil too much from this encounter, we're yeah. going to go ahead and skip through to the okay. end. But you've seen a good portion of the first phase of the fight. Okay. All right, we got some sweet loot, as always. Achievement, uh, granted. achievement granted, Immortal Navigation Core. That's right. You've achievement seen it here first. <laughs> All right, this is not the right way. <laughs> it's amazing that I've been working in this place for, you know, well over a year, and I still get lost sometimes. It's because it's so friggin' big. <gasps> What's that? Is that a shiny lore pickup? I think it is. What? All right. 
So we are almost out of the way. We're going to fly through these next few mini-bosses so that we have time for the, uh, the last big bad. Ooh. Taking that space elevator up. Wow. We <laughs> plop. How convenient. We've got some malfunctioning bots here in the, uh, the med bay. Uh-oh. We, uh, we were told we had to name one of these, rename one of these, to the malfunctioning Phlebotobot. It was a phlebotomist, but no, it's a phlebotobot. <laughs> phlebotobot. I know. Somewhere right now, one of our writers is very, very happy. Bone Dr. Maburu. Bone Dr. Maburu. So this is a, an interesting encounter. We kind of played with the rules. Uh, in this one, there's no healing allowed. That seems like a little bit of a challenge. Okay. Uh, but you have some surgery survivors over here that will help you out. They can be healed, and if you get them to full health, they uh, give you a little bit of healing support. So, so what happens if a healer tries to heal anyone here? It just has no zero. effect? Big donut. Man. So that's that's what this brittle bones effect on me is. Healing taken in combat reduced by 100%. Wow. This poses, it's just a little bit of a different design for players to try and wrap their heads around how they're going to handle uh, healing the raid. It cre creates healing as a limited resource for the whole encounter as opposed to uh, something that you kind of are, you know, are used to in core gameplay where you heal as much as your healers can do. So uh, let's give him a little fight. Oh yeah, the survivors are trying to bleed out. You have to keep them alive too. That's is a, that what the healers are doing? And uh... that is what the healers' gameplay looks like. It's okay. keeping these guys alive, and also timing the uh, the successful heals. Let's see if we can. So the survivors. There we go. Probably don't have brittle bones on them. They saying. don't have okay. brittle bones. They've already been uh, subjected to all of Maburo's horrible experiments. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Uh oh. Here's where we were stitched abomination. He looks really mad. You can tell because he has big glowing red eyes. That's that's our go-to indicator for someone that's mad. <laughs> hey, Micah, uh, I saw your comment about the lore pickup. I will remember it, okay? I just want you to know. All right. We're going to move on from Aburu because we're trying to get through these things uh, so we can show off the biggest and baddest of all of the raid bosses ever? Uh, yeah, yes. in the entire universe. Yes. In all possible universes. Ooh. Uh, That's okay. taking it up a notch. Exactly. We don't, we don't do half measures. Right, we do We go not. for zombie space <laughs> pirates. All right, this is uh, Head Shrinker Wagasa. Yep. And he's going to shrink your head and shatter your soul. Uh, this is an example where we try and use uh, some mini boss uh, abilities and base pop abilities to sort of signal mechanics that you might see in the future, just so that you're familiar enough with them to be able to figure them out and it's not just a completely opaque um, you know, wall of mechanics. Yep. So he has a similar mechanic that you'll see on Lavica. On Lavica it's called Cacophony of Souls. Here it's called Soul Shatter. But he basically, if I stand in this, uh oh. Breaks my soul into three separate fragments Ooh. that walk in inconveniently in opposite directions, and they're tethered to me doing quite a bit of damage until I finish them off. Let's go ahead and kill those. So you have to kill your own soul. Yep. Uh oh. I got hit by two of them, so now there's six of them. Uh oh. I foresee this getting way out of control. I hate People it when I have careful. This. Careful. All right. Magasa, it's time for you to be done. More fat loots. So this is the med bay. We kind of didn't take much of a look at this, but uh, we can we get a general around. idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some some interesting technology being used in here between the full body bots and the the moody surgeons. <laughs> and this is another example of fantastic art. Uh, doing their doing their best is the Hall of Horrors, formerly known as the Morgue. Clear out some of the space pop and. The morgue has some coffins. They yeah. seem to be uh, animated of their own will. You know, spooky Halloween style right. coffins. So here we've got our first mini boss encounter in the morgue, which is the Untombed Horror. He's uh, big and mean and looks kind of like Space Eater, yeah. or Star Eater rather. So let's give him a pull. Uh, one of his mechanics is uh, his. Menace buff or aura 
that provides people, oh, I'm just going to be stunned forever now, aren't I? This is, encounter is not meant to be done by a single person. Uh, Menace basically gives him reflect damage and everybody in the group 100% vigor. So you, DPS is kind of in control of their, uh, their own health bar. If they do too much damage, they're going to kill themselves. If they, uh, but they get a fat buff to doing damage. So it's one of those things where you might have to control your, uh, your burst damage so as to not one-shot yourself. But it's so much fun to see the big giant numbers. Yeah. Uh, let's get this. This encounter has a lot of uh, CC elements in it, and I'm basically just going to sit here CC'd for most of the encounter. Uh, this one has one of the most interesting, and to me, as a designer, one of the most interesting auto attack mechanics, where uh, you want to soak them lest you end up in a state that looks a lot like this. So we're going to go ahead and finish him off and move to the next one, which is tiny. He is. Not so he tiny. Is not tiny. No. <laughs> Lavaki Lava, Lava even makes a comment about how bad my joke was <laughs> in naming him. That's what you call ironic. Uh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so this is another case where we're using his mechanics, which is this big fat oh my wine colored bar yeah. that's moving my health down. Uh, which is a, one of the new healing absorb mechanics that we have. You'll see some of this on Lavica, you'll see some of this uh, at other places in this uh, raid, but he uses it in a way that makes uh, tank swaps probably desirable. So, uh, I won't focus too much on him because these guys, these guys have seen a lot of testing on PTR and I think a lot of people already know. Uh, these ones were in testing for even in the first phase, so. Uh, Tiny, he's also doing Festering Stench, which is another mechanic that is new, or another little bit of tech that's new, is damage based on your missing health. So we're able to see how much health you're missing. For the big giant healing absorb on you, that might be a lot, because it's hard to heal through, and the damage scales up the more health you're, health you're missing. So let's go ahead and finish him off. And now, hey guys, you get out of the way. Need you. Are we there? Is it time? I think we're there. So. What is the ma make sure people know what is the mask of Mogmog Mog and why does Lavica want it so bad? All right, well let's go. We've got a little bit of concept here, so let's set the stage, For as it were. Okay, so here's Lavica. Some early concepts of her um, that turned into some super cool color concepts. Oh wow! Yeah, of some possible Lavicas. These ones are phenomenal. I mean, we've got like the. The really voodoo one on the left, yeah. kind of, and then she's a little bit more Drac in there with the crazy hair. Yeah, that one's pretty close to I think what we ended up with is number two is pretty close. I like the the skull and her staff in the third. Yeah, one. I think that's pretty awesome. And, and then, then the uh, spine and skull staff in the yeah, next one. That's right? awesome. And then the last one's got some jellyfish hair. Yeah. <laughs> It looks great. Our artist, our concept art team is just amazing. Yeah. Uh, so here's here's the closest thing to what we had for the final model. Uh, she's got her spooky hair with the screaming skulls. Yep. Which is just too cool. You've got uh, you've got the mask. Now this isn't actually the mask that we ended up with, but that's close. It isn't. Yeah. But the reason for that is we decided that we would just wanted to put the actual mask of Mog Mog that we made onto her staff. Yeah. So she's got she's got the mask of Mog Mog integrated into her staff. And then this, this is a is very grainy in, de in development picture yeah. of Lavica's room in the first, the very first incarnation. It was eight times the size it is now. <laughs> it was huge, <laughs> and it got way cooler looking too over time. Uh, you can they can be the judge for themselves. Because look at that. That is much better, and this yeah. isn't even the final version. We've done more, our, a more, uh, a little bit more prop cleanup, a little bit more lighting, uh, and this is. This is what it turned into. Part All right. Of, part of the design on, on making it smaller was when we had it so big to, to begin with, it took almost a minute to run from the middle of the room to help one of these furnaces, which once we get into the encounter, you'll see the furnaces are kind of important. Um, you, you don't actually, want it to take a minute. A whole minute, right. exactly. That's, that's just insane. <laughs> so uh, we, we ended up doing is shrinking the encounter a lot, shrinking it a lot, a lot more, kept shrinking it and shrinking it, and now Lavica is actually pretty big compared to her room. She's got a... So uh, as you run to the final, your, your final death here, um, real quick, so the Mask of Mog Mog uh, is something that Lavica 
obtained while she was at or on Skullcano Island with Mordecai. Uh, if you followed Lavica's story from really almost from the very beginning of the game, you first run across her as a Dominion player in Dara Dune. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that she's all about the dark rites and necromancy. Uh, she becomes a necro shaman. Yep. And uh, she wanted the Mask of Mog Mog, which was this epic, uh, powerful, moody relic, uh, because it just basically allowed her to be more powerful uh, in the necromantic arts. It actually allowed her to raise Mordecai from the dead yep. when the time came. And uh, so, anyway, now she's here. Uh, you've got this creepy... <laughs> Giant mask of Mog Mog in the back, which is awesome, by the way. Yep. Right? I like how uh, angry it is. Yeah, we do. We managed to make an inanimate, ob inanimate object, well, animate, and be very, very right. angry looking. So, yeah, and so now here you are. You are going to have to see if you can defeat probably the most powerful Necro Shaman in the entire universe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I don't think anyone has competition for Lavica. Right. Um, so one of the things we went for thematically on the Lavica encounter is she has sort of mastery over life and death now. She's beyond the ability to bring people back from the dead. She could raise you know, zombies and skeletons in Daradun, and now she's raising some of the most powerful, iconic villains of, uh, of the universe in Mordecai Redmond. Yeah. So she kind of transcends life and death. That, in that regard, Players, when they enter this area, get a buff called Realm of the Living that says the, sp uh, the barrier to the spirit realm feels very thin here. So because of Lavica's you know, rituals that have happened in her, her uh, stronghold or her special study here, yeah. um, she's kind of torn the veil to the spirit realm. And you might be experiencing creatures that have you know, dead components and live components. Uh, when you die in this encounter, it's not your final death. Your spirit has to go on and fight spirit aspects of creatures you're fighting in this encounter. So it's part of your primal echo, which is a little bit what we explored in uh, uh, Artera, I believe. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's a lot to do. There's two separate fights basically happening on two different layers, and players have to navigate between both of them. I was going to say, so does that mean that you are strategically choosing when to die in this encounter? Yes. So when you die, you create a lost soul that's on, Lavica tears your soul out and there's a lost soul on the living, uh, the side where all of your living companions are. Yeah. They can uh, attack that soul and basically break it down and then you can uh, use that lost soul to get back to the realm of the living, to come back to life. So you have to choose consciously when you want to die, when you want to be in the dead realm, fighting the spirits of all the things that you've uh, that you've uh, slain in the live realm, yeah. and then also attacking Lavica uh, in her spirit form, where you do bonus damage to her while, she, while you're uh, in the spirit realm. Wow. So That sounds pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. There might be some challenges to showing both sides, as I am only one person. So <laughs> okay. let's go ahead and set things up so that I can uh, be ready. But uh, yes, let's do it. Prepare yourself All right. Oop, I am dead now. I'm on the dead side. And being on the uh, being in the spirit realm, you deal with things differently. There are some uh, these essence surges or essence voids. Yeah. On the live realm they're they're just damage. But on the dead realm they actually pull your spirit in. So that while you're pretty it's pretty easy to move out of the telegraph on the live side, and the dead side you're slowly sucked into the vortex of the essence void, which is uh, Painful. In fact, 100% lethal. It, it does almost a million damage, I believe. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and it, let's see if I can cheat a little bit to make this encounter work a little bit better for me. All right, so I can see my lost soul now. I like, showed myself my lost soul. We're going to go ahead and destroy it so I can write it back up to the other realm. Oh boy. Some spirits have come down here. They're not happy. They are not happy. All right, we're back in the realm of the living. We've made it back. That's uh, quite a bit of work <laughs> to get back by yourself. I wouldn't recommend trying it at home. 
Uh, now I get the feeling they've got there's these furnaces that are in the background. Are those going to come into play at some point here? So the furnaces are there's two things with the furnaces. Yeah. One thing is that's where she's summoning her skeletons from. Oh, okay. Uh, there's lots of bones, bones strewn yeah. about in there, and she just you know I'll just animate some skeletons for you to fight right. because why why should I fight when I can my minions can fight for me? The incinerated remains of her victims. Basically. Yeah, of her. Countless victims, right. probably thousands, okay. <laughs> maybe even tens of thousands at this point. Uh, so, one thing that players can do is they can use those furnaces to separate their soul from their body and die in a very quick fashion. Furnaces are pretty lethal. Um, let's go ahead and see what her mid phase looks like. So, this is Cacophony of Souls. She is uh, very angry at being, you know, Players have actually done some damage to her and have gotten her down enough that she's feeling like she needs to defend herself a little bit more thoroughly. She starts summoning massive quantities of skeletons from the, the uh, furnaces in the corner. I'm, I'm seeing some similarities in mechanics from uh, the base pop that we saw in the previous section. We did message a little bit. Right, yeah, this is right. Cacophony of Souls. Okay. And you can see the similar, similar visuals and similar style of what happens. But... The difference is we didn't, obviously, we took Soul Shatter as a mechanic out, and the Cacophony is, does something different in this encounter. So yep. what it looks like, you know how it's supposed to respond to your inputs, but it's still not something that you're going to uh, immediately have mastery over. So these skeletons are fixating on me, and there's quite a lot of them at this point. Um, but with that, I think I think we're not going to spoil any more of Lavica. Oh, okay. Probably a good idea. Sorry, folks. Boom. You saw you saw to the to the cacophony phase. It only gets more exciting and challenging from here. It certainly does. I think from from some of the mechanics that people see, you might be able to infer some of the future uh, uh, the later phases of the fight. Yeah. There's some there's some stuff going on that seems to be fairly intuitive. A lot of people have been like, I think it's gonna be like this. Yeah. They, they might be right. Okay. Well, we, uh, I think, have come to the end of the stream. Have we already? We <laughs> We're like 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes over, I think. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of stuff. And you didn't even show everything. I you know. had to rush through a lot yep. of the mini-bosses. There's a lot of stuff you haven't seen yet. So. I think the takeaway here is that there is a boatload of content in this second phase of Red Moon. Lots of mini-bosses, lots of cool rooms, lots of real bosses. Mm -hmm. Uh, and an unbelievable amount of fun and excitement. Uh, that's what you're going to get with Red Moon Mutiny. That is what we're aiming for. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited for you guys to get in there and destroy everything. All right, so to recap, uh, tomorrow the 9th, all of the cross-faction goodness is going into Wildstar. So get in there, start making your cross-faction guilds. Uh, your cross-faction dungeon groups, your cross-faction raid groups. Check it out. Make sure it's working correctly because on the 16th, Red Moon Mutiny goes live in Wildstar. Uh, and I'm assuming there's going to be lots of new groups, new faces, new players who are going to be enjoying this content. Absolutely. Uh, as we showed today, it is super epic and cool and fun. Uh, and engaging and I think you guys are really going to love it once you get in there and start uh, experiencing it. Um, for all of you out there that don't already, uh, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, come back and visit us on this live stream. We've got some uh, other exciting ones that are coming up here in the next couple weeks. So just yeah. watch out for that schedule, which we'll be posting soon. Uh, we have actually, along those lines, we have a Dungeon Chase stream on Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, Dungeon Chase is one of our events. Uh, there is a a uh, brand new chase item that's in there. Oh, really? A new uh, Taurine Pumera mount, which is super awesome. Sweet. I didn't actually get the last one from the last event, so I'm hoping uh, that I can get this one. Very cool. So, uh, whoa, we had a little uh, <laughs> glitch in the matrix there, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, tune in to that stream. Watch out for the announcement for Dungeon Chase. It's coming up. <gasps> Oh, there it is. Wow. And the pet, too? Uh, the pet as well. So That's phenomenal. Got to admit, that thing is pretty badass. <laughs> um, 
So, thank you guys for all joining us today. Tyler, thanks for the uh, informative run through of yeah. Red Moon Mutiny. Thanks for having me and letting me talk everyone's ear off. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you very much for, for joining in today.